Hey, this is Brendan. It's going to be a short video explaining how you can find the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches zero uh, and how you can find any kind of surrounding limit related to that. So what, I can, what we can see is that what I wrote up here are uh, two formulas. One is that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is equal to one. You don't really have to worry about where this comes from most likely. Um, there's something called L'Hopital's rule that can be used to derive this. You can also derive it using uh, some indifference formulas of signs, but most people aren't going to need to know that right now. And the formula on the right is uh, it's kind of a different variation of that. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of ax over ax is equal to 1. So uh, what this means is that in order for us to say the limit as x approaches 0 is equal to 1 uh, for this function, we need to have the same thing sort of in the parentheses here as we have on the bottom, or at least some part of the bottom. I need to be able to take this out. So looking at this problem right here, what I can see is on the top I have sine of 6x, on the bottom I have 6x. So in order to make this look a little bit more like what's up top, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 sixth times the sine of x over x. Again, this is all the limit as x approaches 0. And what I know is that for this part right here, this whole section, the limit's just equal to 1. So if I take 1 and I multiply it by 1 sixth, my answer is simply going to be 1 out of 6. So because my x value here matched my other x value in the bottom, I was able to say that this is just equal to 1. Now let's look at the top here. What I have is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over 10x. 5x and 10x are not the same thing, so I need to ask myself, what can I take out of this 10 to make it a 5? Uh, it comes uh, a little bit like factoring. I can take a 2 out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 1 half times sine of 5x over 5x. Now, since my 5x and my 5x are both the same in this case, this 5x here and this 5x here, I can pretty much say that I'm, I'm good to go. This limit as x approaches 0 for sine of 5x over 5x, we can apply that formula just equal to 1. So this is simply going to equal 1 half. Going to the next problem, this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, you can't take anything out of the inside of a sine function at this point in math. So what we need to do is we need to do something down here at the bottom. Uh, so this is 3x, and we need this to be 3x in order to match it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom of this equation by 3 times 3. So this is going to become 3 times the sine of, I'm use different colors here to help you see it, of 3x over, now in the bottom we also have 3x. So because I have this, all of this right here matches, this part just equals 1, so my final answer is just going to be 3. This last problem here is a little bit more difficult because uh, the, nothing comes out totally clean. Um, what am I going to have to take out of a 10 to make it a 4? Um, I'm going to have to essentially divide 10 by uh, 2.5, or I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom in this case by 2 fifths. So what I'll end up with, again, I haven't changed the value of the fraction because I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing, but the bottom here, 2 fifths times 10, is going to give me the 4x that I'm looking for. I still have my sine of 4x in the top, and this whole thing is being multiplied by 2 fifths on the top. This 2 fifths was combined with that 10 to give us that 4x. And now I can see again, I have my 4x and my 4x, sine of 4x over 4x, and this is simply going to equal 2 fifths. And that's how you do these types of problems. There's not a ton of variation if you're in pre-calc around this. Uh, also not a lot of variation in calculus or IB math related to uh, these kind of basic problems. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel.